Air defense systems are not just weapons, they represent an entire philosophy of aerial warfare. In the middle of the Cold War, the USSR created a complex that became a true turning point in air defense history, the S-300. This system changed the approach to air operations, forced NATO to rethink its tactics, and effectively set a new standard for airspace protection. Today, we'll break down exactly how the S-300 revolutionized aerial warfare. In the 1960s and 1970s, the Soviet air defense forces already had powerful systems, the S-75, S-125, and S-200. However, each of them was highly specialized. The S-75 was effective against high-altitude targets. The S-125 covered low altitudes. And the S-200 operated at extremely long ranges. But NATO was advancing its aviation capabilities. High-speed, maneuverable aircraft, cruise missiles, and low-altitude penetration tactics emerged. The USSR needed a system that could counter all these threats at once, reliably, quickly, and across different altitudes and distances. Thus began the development of the S-300, a process that took nearly a decade. The S-300 was a breakthrough in several key aspects. Multifunctionality. The system could intercept aircraft, helicopters, cruise missiles, tactical ballistic missiles, and even high-speed targets at the edge of the atmosphere range, and altitude of engagement. Depending on the modification, the S-300 could hit targets at distances of up to 150 kilometers and at altitudes up to 30 kilometers. Mobility. The system could be deployed in just five minutes, allowing for rapid position changes to evade retaliatory strikes. Networked architecture, radar stations, launchers, and command posts operated as part of an integrated network. The system could share data and guide missiles based on information received from external radars. Before the S-300, air combat tactics relied on massive air raids, suppressing weak air defense zones and high-altitude attacks. The S-300 forced NATO to rethink these approaches. SEAD concept. Special aircraft and missiles were developed to hunt down radars, destroy air defenses first, and only then penetrate deeper into enemy territory. Development of Stealth Technology The S-300 accelerated the design of low observable aircraft, like the F-117 and B-2, capable of evading detection at long ranges. Low Altitude Penetration Tactics Aircraft began flying at extremely low altitudes, using terrain features to hide and minimize the risk of detection. Although the S-300 saw limited combat use, its mere presence influenced the course of conflicts. In Yugoslavia, NATO had to spend massive resources hunting down air defense systems. In Syria and Libya, even rumors of potential S-300 deliveries were enough to deter aggression from adversaries. Moreover, the S-300 became a key element of anti-access area denial, a 2AD strategies, making certain areas too dangerous for enemy aircraft to operate. The S-300 became the foundation for even more powerful systems, the S-400 and S-500. Yet even decades later, the S-300 remains a formidable weapon. Modernized versions are still in service in dozens of countries, and even the most advanced aircraft today must account for the threat posed by this system. The S-300 didn't just become an air defense system, it turned into a symbol of an impenetrable aerial shield forcing militaries around the world to rethink their approach to air operations. The S-300 is a rare example of a single system shaping an entire era of warfare. It forced military engineers to seek new solutions and made pilots think twice before entering its range. Even today, as more advanced systems come online, the S-300 remains in service, standing as a testament to Soviet engineering ingenuity. What do you think? Will the aircraft of the future be able to outmaneuver modern air defense systems? Share your thoughts in the comments. Let's discuss.